new ones the next. Um, we had great, we were able to have small groups and we had over 50 teen and adult volunteers helping. I mean, that is amazing. I wanna give you guys a hand of applause because the truth is Lisa and I can plan and plan and we can sort and we can buy, but we could not pull off what happened over the last three days if you guys weren't here to help do that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've been up here for months. Um, begging, pleading, asking, and you guys came through, which you always do, which is one of my favorite things about FIRST. You guys are such a great support system to me, which enables me to do my job, to, to shine my light, and through what you do, you shine your light to these kids, so thank you so much. If you ever wonder if our two very different services come together as one church, you need to come to VBS. We usually, on a given Sunday, have a 9 a.m. service, we have Sunday schools or small groups that happen in between. We have an 11 a.m. service, and then all the kiddos are downstairs. But during VBS, all those people come together as one, with one common goal, as one church. And it's such a beautiful thing to see. And honestly, I wouldn't be up here today passing the torch on to the kids if it weren't for very many of you in this room who did the same thing in this building for myself. VBS has been a huge part of FIRST ever since, well, I, I don't remember how long Brady said it was, 200 years or something, I don't know. <laughs> Seems like forever. But VBS has been a big integral part of FIRST in our children's ministry. And because of you guys, I'm up here doing what I'm doing. And because of what I'm doing, we're gonna have future generations. And that's how we carry the torch of Jesus and shine his light. So thank you so very much. Um, I'm going to share a little bit with you what we learned this week. We have our Bible memory buddies. Each day we had one. We focused on three of them in particular. The first one is our buddy Cosmo. He's the star here. When life feels dark, we can shine Jesus' light. And I'm going to have Lily come up real quick because this is going to be interactive because that's how I roll. So she's going to teach you. I'm going to prompt you guys with the daily theme, and then your job is to say, Shine Jesus' light. Can you show him? Shine Jesus' light. So I'm going to say, when life feels dark, we shine Jesus' light. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, you can sit down. Good job, Lil. <laughs> Our Bible verse for that day was, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. Our Bible story was, Jesus comes to earth as baby to be a king. When the world felt really dark and God had been silent for hundreds of years, Jesus came into the world to be the light. When our world feels dark, scary, or lonely, we can remember that Jesus is our light. We can reflect that light on others when they feel that way too. When life feels dark, we shine Jesus' light. Good job. On day two, our buddy Soul, which somebody put a star on his face, that's all right. He taught us that when people are sad, we can shine Jesus' light. Our Bible verse for that day was, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, 14.1. Our Bible story for that day was, Jesus cares for others during his crucifixion. Now this day is always a little bit of a tough one with kiddos, trying to get them to really understand what happened, and you just gotta give it to them in pieces. They, you know, bottom line, kids need to know who Jesus is, who he is to them, and that he loves them and wants to be their friend. So while Jesus lived here on earth, we learned that he shone his light on and love to all he came in contact with, especially those that others didn't want to shine their light to. Others that, that sh people shied away from or thought were no good news, you know? He went out of his way to shine his light on them, show his love, and make sure he, he, they knew that they belonged to him. <clears throat> um, he was, even during his crucifixion, as he was dying and bleeding on the cross, he took time to care for his mother, his disciples, those who loved him and came and were weeping and grieving over him. He took time to even minister to one of the men hanging on the cross next to him and promise him a place in heaven that day with him. So even when things were good, which is one of the things we learned, that when things are good, we also need to shine Jesus' light. Jesus did amazing, and he shone his light. But even when things were the hardest for him, 
You know, people were beating him and killing him, but he was still shining his light on those that were doing that to him, those who loved him and cared for him. And that is a big, big one to learn. So when people are sad, we shine Jesus' light. On day three, we learned um, Hallie, our comment. I thought it was Haley, but it pronounced as Hallie. There's some, you know, disagreement on how to pronounce her name. Either way, she helped us to see that when people need help, we can shine Jesus' light. The Bible verse for that day was, Let your good deeds shine so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Matthew 5, 16. Our Bible story was Philip helps the Ethiopian. This Ethiopian was a powerful and wealthy man who had more than a passing curiosity about God. He had traveled a long way and purchased a scroll, which would have been quite a pretty penny at the time. Due to the Jewish law at that time, he wouldn't have even been allowed to enter the temple. He might have been allowed in the courts. But that would have kept him from, he wouldn't have been able to ask questions or seek help in understanding God's word. He didn't know what he was reading, but he wanted to know. Philip, who was known as Philip the Evangelist, was, no, was able to talk with him and answer his questions and help him understand and know God. And that's what we as the church are charged with today. Whether it's reading scripture, helping in church, or a normal everyday thing like raising money for those in need, taking a meal to those who are feeling sick or sad. When people need help, we can shine Jesus' light. And that is what these kids learned, and they yelled it at the top of their lungs. And, you know, I told them yesterday that at the, bo at the end of the day, as long as they knew who Jesus was, who Jesus was to them, and that they can shine his light and reflect it on others, then I was a happy camper. <laughs> So again, thank you to all of you who uh, participated in any way, shape, or form. If you gave money, if you brought things, if you showed up and helped, you made the snacks, you did the things, if you prayed for us, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And as we're talking about helping people and shining Jesus' light, I'm going to ask Max to come up here. We uh, chose PB&J Family um, is it Ministries or Family Services. That's who we supported. That's who we raised money for. That's how we shined our light. And Max is going to give you an update on that and how we did. Thank you. If you ever need to get a big dose of how much energy the Lord puts in kids, just come to VBS. <laughs> so um, this year's uh, theme, as Amanda said, was Shine Jesus Light. And uh, it was an extraordinary event. Lauren and I uh, just took a very small piece in that. We were the ones that uh, explained the PBS project to the young kids. And what we, the project for this year, because it's one thing to teach them to do something. It's another thing to actually do it. So we partnered with PB&J and I called them up because we had such a wonderful project at Christmas, is that I said, well, what do you need? And of course, you know, when you think about needs, um, you know, there's all sorts of things, but what they really needed is they needed diapers, baby wipes, and gas cards, just those very, very basic things. So we set a modest goal of somewhere around $500 and so what we're going to do is, over the three-day period, there were collections. And in that three-day period, there was a total of $537 that was raised. Now, there were three days. The first day was just sort of a general giving of some, some money. But then that day two and day three, there was a couple of little competitions. So on day two, it was boys versus girls. And on that day, it looks like the boys didn't do very well. <laughs> and then on day three, it was kids versus adults. Well, the adults just squeaked it out. <laughs> so the kids were, uh, were right in there. But anyway, the kids learned how Jesus helps fulfill our most basic needs. And so we wanted to teach them that not only does Jesus love them, and our neighbors, but he loves everybody, and he wants 
their help and our help to help our neighbors. And um, so we partnered with, uh, with PB&J. And so in learning this firsthand to raise this money um, is that now we're going to go out and, uh, and buy these items and then present them to PB&J probably in the next few days. And so I have an invitation for you. And that is, is that if in your heart you would like to join with the kids at PB&J to give some towards this project, there is a silver plastic bucket out in the reception area. And, uh, and, you, and uh, we'd be very grateful if you would uh, help in that project. And I, I do want to say one more thing, and that is, you know, sometimes I think I'm... Uh, come up with some good ideas, but whenever it comes to good ideas, I lend that off to my wife, okay? <laughs> so Amanda said, okay, Max, you and Lauren, you're going to talk to the kids for about six to eight minutes. And, you know, that's a long time, you know, to, because they tend to get distracted. Well, my wife came up with this idea, and uh, last night... Uh, we bought a couple of things. We bought 64 of those Siloom chemical sticks, the ones you snap and break and they like. Well, we were down in the family area, and those kids, and Lauren said she only had two of them left. So she, there was a big crowd last night, and uh, they cracked those sticks. She said, you know, the first little kids came in, they cracked the sticks, and they didn't have to be told what to do. And so they cracked the sticks, and they're all waving it. They turned the lights out, and then they sang this little light of mine, and it was just a, a wonderful time. So anyway, um, Amanda and everybody else that helped in this, it was a wonderful project. We were only there for a little bit of time, but if you want to be energized by kids, come to VBS, and it is just a great time. So if you want to make a contribution, it'll be out in the reception area. And uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Amanda, and thank the church. Thank you very much. One of the cool things about VBS is uh, not only the amazing decorations they did up here, but they did all these amazing decorations throughout the entire church. If you walk down the hallway and where they had snacks and the foyer and everywhere in between, it was just cool space-themed decorations everywhere. One of my favorite places to go, though, was the Imagination Station. This is kind of basically the craft area for VBS. And each night, they would hang up these little stars based on different questions the teachers and leaders would ask. And then they would turn off the lights, and all these stars would start glowing everywhere. And I was like, these stars are really cool. I, I grew up with glow-in-the-dark stuff, and, and I was thinking, well, how do these things work? So I kind of got online, just like everyone does, and Google, how does glow-in-the-dark work? And uh, so I came up with this thing. It says, basically, there's these phosphors, phosphors excuse me, and uh, when light... Uh, is shined on these little toys, these little gadgets, these little stickers that they're placing on the walls. There's, there's particles in there to get energized, and for a while that, that energized particles glow just like stars would in the sky. It's really, really cool. And so there's so many things like that throughout this entire VBS experience that would glow or light up. So we had the, 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 uh, the stars and stickers like we talked about. Max talked about the glow sticks, which is basically a chemical reaction that gives off light. We had all these lasers and stars pointed all throughout the auditorium, which is electric, uh, electric light basically plug things in the wall. There's probably battery power guys, like this guy, I think he had like battery power, so these little batteries that have energy sources and they radiate light. And the whole point of this thing, I was thinking, man, none of these things though really create light on their own. Every one of these things have some kind of reaction or are given energy. You know, the glow-in-the-dark stickers, they receive energy from other lights. The chemical reaction, they're giving off a, a chemical reaction that produces the light. When we plug things in the wall, it's getting energy from our power grid, from nuclear or from you know, hydroelectric or solar power. It's, we're, we're just kind of taking energy from one source and putting it into something else. And we call that light. That's what we talk about. And the whole theme was shining 
Jesus' light. And there's another story, a Bible story, I was thinking, this is kind of like similar to what we're seeing here with all this, these light things. And it comes from Exodus, and many of y'all know this story. Um, it's from uh, Moses as he went down, uh, went up to Mount Sinai. And as he was coming down, I'm going to read from Exodus 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. It's that same principle. Moses didn't have something special within him. He was only shining the light of God. And that's what these kids did throughout this whole week. They received the word. They received Jesus. They, they experienced Jesus. They got to interact with Jesus through the leaders and through the volunteers and through all the activities and crafts. And because of that, they were shining Jesus' light. And I was looking more about this story in Exodus, and I realized, well, there's a New Testament kind of reference to it in uh, 2 Corinthians. And Paul kind of has, is reflecting back on the, the Old Testament law, and he's reflecting back on Moses and basically saying, Moses' light started dimming, and he had to wear a veil because it was dimming, and he was kind of... And, and Paul explains why. He says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who put on a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at, while his radiance was fading away. Because that's what happens with us, guys. That we, we interact with Jesus Christ, and he gives us this power, he gives us this light, and he tells us, go be a, a light to the world. Be a sitting on a hill so that people will see the goodness of God. But if we do not stay connected to Christ, that light eventually will diminish. Just like the glow in the dark stars. If they're not exposed to a, the light source, they will dim and slowly fade away. Just as our light sticks that we broke. When we woke up this morning, many of them in our house were already starting to fade away. And if you don't pay the power bill... The lights go out. We have to stay connected to the source. Last vital verse that I think of um, when I'm thinking about this, this idea of staying connected with God comes from um, the book of John. And this is John. He was teaching his disciples. He was kind of saying, hey, this, this is the last big teaching I want to give to them before I go to the cross. And he says, I am the vine you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you will do nothing. So our goal as a church with these kids that have been experiencing this, the light of Jesus, being connected to the vine of Jesus Christ, we are here to encourage them to stay connected. Encourage them to stay involved in church and to stay involved in their word, in their prayers, in their times. But we have to do that by leading that ourselves. Being in the Word, being in prayer, volunteering downstairs, volunteers for next year's VVS, volunteer for the youth program. We need to be the light to them so they can experience Christ in the same way. VBS was great. And we want to keep shining that light in our community as well. And as Max has mentioned that as well, that a lot of these kids, they go here. And they're connected. But some of the kids that came may not be connected. And so our job as a congregation is to pray for the kids that came that are going back to homes and situations that are less than ideal. That we want to be praying for them that they that light, they can find a new source when they go home. And hopefully they, they'll come back here as well. So that, that's the challenge I give to you guys. To continue to support our ministries as we continue to teach kids that Jesus is the light of the world. We also want to volunteer to help with that, but also be in prayer for those that came this last week. So I'm going to close out in prayer as we, as we continue to uh, continue in our worship and continue in our service, but uh, let's pray. Dear Holy Father, we come before you, and we thank you for the opportunity to serve you here at first. We pray for the opportunity that we get to experience the, the excitement and the joy of these kids learning about Jesus and how he loves them, how he cares for them through their hardships, through the good times, and how they can shine light not only here at first, 
not only to their families, and, but to their communities around them. God, you have commissioned us as a church to support these kids, to help teach them, encourage them to stay connected to you because you are the Lord of all. You are the ultimate power source that we all must be connected to, that we all must remain in your presence. We thank you for your son and his sacrifice on the cross. In your name we pray. Amen.